Our second presentation this morning is uh, Dr. Hong Lee from the University of Delaware. He's been at the University of Delaware for about six years now, uh, presenting on, a, on a, one of the longer term projects that he's been working on regarding wet scrubbers. Please help me welcome Hong Lee. Thank you, Aaron. Uh, first, I'd like to recognize my uh, co-authors, uh, Chen Dan, he's a PhD student, uh, Dr. Philip Moore, uh, Mike Buger, uh, Catherine Hickman, uh, Paul Patterson, Greg Martin, and uh, Jerry Martin. So really, this is a collaborative uh, uh, project, so we have a lot of uh, people involved. So ammonia is one of the top air uh, quality issues in the poultry operations, uh, both on the uh, animal health and also on the environment. It can cause uh, uh, nitrogen deposition in the ecosystem, cause the eutrophication, and also it's a precursor for PM 2.5. So uh, there are several uh, technologies we can use to uh, capture ammonia or reduce ammonia emission from poultry operation. So uh, what we could do from the, uh, the sources, okay, so we could do, uh, we could use litter amendment uh, now I'm going to use acidified litter amendment to reduce the pH, capture the ammonia, or we can replace batting and reduce emission. And there are some other practices like dietary manipulation, yeah, change the food protein, or adding some enzyme uh, probiotic in the feed can reduce the uh, microbiome in the litter and reduce the emission. So uh, how about we, can we treat the exhaust air? If we can uh, treat exhaust air can further reduce emission from the uh, from the house. Okay, so acid scrubber and the vegetative buffer, their available technology can further reduce emission from uh, poultry operation. So uh, scrubber have been used in Europe for quite a long time. However, there are a lot of challenge uh, uh, from their experience. Okay, firstly for uh, for the operation, uh, one of the challenges is. Uh, uh, the, the dynamic of ventilation during the grow out and during the season. So when you're during the winter, when you're small chick, the ventilation, you only need about uh, 2,500 CFM. And during the summer, when you need the tunnel ventilation, the, the uh, ventilation, you need uh, 250 to 300,000 CFM uh, that capacity. So, and also, because of the ventilation change dramatically, the concentration of the ammonia in the house a chain. So uh, during the winter you might see uh, 180 ppm easily and uh, during the summer you only saw uh, that 2 or 1 ppm. So the scrubber should be able to handle that the dynamic. Okay. Another challenge is if you put a scrubber on the fan, the pressure drop, the build up pressure on the fan really can reduce uh, uh, the uh, capacity and the efficiency of the fan. So uh, either you had to uh, increase the fan runtime, or uh, you need some new fan to overcome that uh, ventilation loss. Okay, so uh, Dr. Philip Moore Group at ARS developed a two-stage uh, low-cost scrubber, uh, only on the minimum fan because we saw that uh, during the winter period, most of the air removed by the minimum fan. So if we can uh, <coughs> capture the ammonia in the minimum fan, we can maximize the uh, uh, reduction on the ammonia. So uh, here are the picture to show the, the scrubber. Basically, this is a, uh, the scrubber made of fiberglass and the wood material. Okay, so uh, the frame made of fiberglass. Uh, uh, under uh, use, this is the first state. Uh, we use water uh, in that. Uh, scrubber and second state we use acid. Okay, so basically the first state remove the most of the dust, and the second state use acid to capture the ammonia. Okay, and more pictures show the inside of the scrubber. We use a uh, uh, pump uh, to recir recirculate the water and the acid to uh, uh, to capture the ammonia. Okay. Uh, a serious uh, laboratory study was conducted uh, under the laboratory condition to see uh, with different airflow rate and different acid what is the uh, ammonia uh, removal efficiency uh, by this problem. Okay. So you can see that uh, in general, uh, in the normal uh, 
uh, ventilation operation range from 5,000 to uh, 8,000. This one designed for a typical 36 inch uh, fan. Okay. So the removal efficiency around 70 to 80 percent. So uh, we conducted a, a few demo suite project to further evaluate the performance of this two-state scrubber on the field condition okay, in Pennsylvania and the Delaware uh, region. <coughs> we select three sites. The first site is on the commercial uh, site. So that farm has two identical uh, three, uh, 500 by 50, uh, 60 feet wide house. So we put one scrubber on one of the minimum fat, 36 inch fat. For that farm, uh, we, uh, the litter was reused, okay, no new body added to the uh, house. So uh, the grow out period was about eight weeks, and uh, during that uh, eight weeks, we collect litter, uh, the liquid sample from both acid and the water scrubber on a daily basis. So, and also we monitor the pH. Whenever the pH above six, so we add acid or uh, replace uh, the acid. A second site is on the research farm with uh, a 2,400 bird. It's a small uh, research uh, house. Uh, we put that fan, uh, scrubber on the one of the 24 inch small exhaust fan. The airflow rate only about 2,000 CFM. Uh, we uh, use a similar uh, protocol uh, with the first site. And the third site is on the organic farm in Pennsylvania. So the difference between the conventional operation and organic operation is organic, you have to replace the, uh, the bedding for every flock. So you have to use the new bedding for every flock and also the growth period uh, generally shorter than commercial one, okay, uh, the conventional one. <laughs> Uh, we developed air uh, sampling system to measure how much ammonia uh, went out from each uh, exhaust fan. So basically we use uh, one of ammonia, uh, two guard analyzer uh, uh, with a uh, uh, multi-point uh, samp sampling system so we can measure the inside and outside concentration before and after the scrubber. And also we, uh, remember we take the a liquid sample from the scrubber. So we do the titration, we measure the ammonia uh, concentrating in the liquid. So we can calculate the uh, ammonia in removal or capture efficiency from the scrubber. Uh, for those three sites, we totally measured uh, about 22 flocks over a one half year period. Eight flocks for the Delaware one and Pennsylvania site, six flocks for uh, the second site. Uh, some result. This is the monthly fan running time for all the uh, site. Okay, so you, you can see there are a lot of uh, uh, variation. The reason that because of the uh, uh, the bird A chain and also the the seasonal chain, temperature different, uh, the bird A different, the uh, fan run time varies a lot. Okay, so uh, this is the the acid we use sodium bisulfate as the acid. So the reason we use sodium bisulfate is uh, compared to the other acid, it's safe, okay? And uh, just from the safety standpoint, we choose uh, sodium bisulfate, okay? So uh, here is uh, sodium bisulfate con uh, con uh, consumption over the uh, 22 flock at the three site. So you see this look on the uh, flock, okay? Uh, uh, the flock average, uh, the the average about uh, 2.5 to 3 uh, kilogram per day for uh, PLT uh, consumption and water consumption, uh, and also it's varied over the uh, the season and the different site. Okay, so the average about 0 0.08 uh, um, cube, me uh, cube meter per day. So electricity consumption and also it really depends on the, the fan run time. Okay. So. And also we plot out the amount uh, re uh, removal efficiency over the flock at different sites. Okay. The first one is that the downward one site, you can see that a lot of uh, the variation. So I just picked this period, you can see that 
Uh, this is kind of like the summer period. So at the beginning, we use a lot of uh, minimum fat. So we get a higher uh, ventilation rate toward the end of flock. When they switch the ventilation from the minimum ventilation to tunnel ventilation, the minimum fan uh, with less re uh, use, okay, so lower uh, emission from that minimum fan, okay. You can see, and also the uh, uh, removal efficiency uh, change. So there is a kind of trend uh, when you have a higher uh, emission rate and uh, uh, lower uh, removal efficiency. And uh, we saw the similar trend for the uh, uh, the other two side. Okay. Uh, one thing we found that the pH uh, really uh, impact the removal efficiency. Okay, this is the one of the uh, actually the, uh, on the one of the weight uh, at the <coughs> PA side. So for the PA side, uh, we have a challenge there for the bar security reason. We could not visit the site on a daily basis. So we only visit the site on a weekly basis. So uh, we measure the pH. If the pH above uh, six, we have to add the acid. Okay, so this one actually showed during that week. So the acid was uh, saturated with uh, ammonia. Okay, so you see that uh, at this point, okay, about uh, four, five, uh, the pH. So uh, this the solution gets saturated uh, very quickly. Okay, uh, when the pH is below four, so we can achieve about 25 percent of reduction. But once the pH above four, so the efficiency drop to 9.5 percent. Okay, so the med so manage the pH is the, uh, the key to operate the uh, uh, scrubber system. Okay. So, and also we saw a kind of a negative trend between the uh, emission rate and uh, uh, the capture efficiency. Okay. So when you have a higher emission rate, basically when you uh, run the fan longer with a higher concentration, so you will have lower uh, capture rate. Okay. Uh, in general, uh, here are the uh, consumption to capture one kilogram ammonia uh, for the acid, uh, the water, and the electricity. Okay. So the our best side is uh, the, the Delaware One site. So uh, uh, to capture one kilogram, we need about seven kilogram acid, uh, 0.17 uh, cubic meter uh, water, and uh, 20 kilowatt electricity. So the worst one is uh, the Pennsylvania site. Uh, the reason that is uh, because we couldn't uh, be there on a daily basis. So uh, actually, we the the acid was saturated, okay, quickly. So we could not uh, replenish or replace on time. As uh, so overall summary, uh, the average uh, the consumption for one kilogram ammonia uh, capturing, uh, the average water consumption about. 0.23 cubic meter. Uh, the electricity uh, consumption of 60 uh, kilowatt hour, and uh, the water consumption uh, about uh, 0.23 cubic meter. Okay. So average efficiency for the three sites were 31 uh, percent, uh, 34 percent for the uh, smaller fan, and only 11 percent for the uh, Pennsylvania site because of the. Uh, the, the longer uh, maintenance period. Okay. So if we can uh, stay on top of the, uh, the pH management, so we can improve the efficiency of the scrubber. Okay. And also, throughout that 22 flock of operation, we learned a lot of uh, lessons from the, uh, the scrubber operation. So uh, we would like to make some recognition for a further improvement. Okay. First one is, uh, uh, we have to increase the uh, fan run time to compensate the uh, ventilation loss because of the, uh, the pressure increase on the fan. And also uh, adding uh, water heaters or the heater system in the, uh, the pump uh, uh, house to uh, eliminate the freezing problem. Last couple of years, we have a very cold winter in Pennsylvania, Delaware, we had some freezing issues. Okay. And also, uh, manage the acid, uh, the pH is very uh, critical. So another one is uh, uh, the current system requires a lot of uh, manual work. So we have to do the, the daily check on the pH. So uh, we would like to recommend automatic uh, 
uh, the dose system and acid tank on site, so uh, doesn't require a lot of uh, manual work. Okay, really can uh, save a lot of uh, uh, hours on a grower. Okay, if you put a lot of hours on the grower, the grower will not use it. Okay, so the last one is for uh, a lot of growers. They don't have crop land or a pasture to use utilize the products. So we recommend a large storage tank so they can store the spent liquid on the site. So uh, and they can use it. Someone can uh, haul it uh, to the uh, uh, to apply it to the ground uh, uh, to the crop field during the off season. Okay. Uh, this project was funded by the NRCS CIG grant and also uh, uh, by the uh, university with uh, the matching fund. <coughs> Question. Thank you. Instead of uh, power costs, because electricity costs vary from region to region, do you have pressure drop data per stage for the 7,000 CFM? Yes. So we did a test actually, the, uh, the pressure drop depends on the uh, flow rate uh, from 30 to 40 percent. Okay. So let's say you have a 36 inch fan, the typical ventilation rate is uh, 10,000 CFM. So after that, about uh, five, you know, 6,000 CFM, okay. so about 40 percent reduction for the uh, uh, the typical 30 fixing fan. For the smaller fan, about 30 percent. All right. So what we had, what I was after was the static water pressure in inches of water column. Oh, it's about 0.12 to 0.15. Okay. Thank you. So how is it compared to like you have the water? Well, actually, uh, if we compare that, this uh, uh, the, the scrubber is more, much more expensive uh, for the, you know, compared to the commercial fertilizer. Uh, yeah. cool. I just want to make a comment. I've given a talk this afternoon on the scrubber, and if you, I think your efficiencies included all those times when the pH was high, yeah. and we we checked ours every day, and, and the efficiency we were getting was about 55 percent. Uh, when we kept that pH low. So in your stored uh, liquid sump water, uh, that eventually gets applied to the field, let's say if you're running during the winter time, you know, I saw some snow, right. uh, yeah. snow around the scrub on some of the slides. Uh, so how would you characterize the MPK uh, as a fertilizer solution plus S? Yeah, so more. Well, the, the uh, depends on how long you Scrub. I mean, you can keep adding acid on the nitrogen. You know, you can, you can just keep going up and up. I mean, if you use it, you actually approach the 38%. No, nowhere close to that. No. Uh, and we, you know, the best you can do is probably with sulfuric. You know, and, and we use sulfuric. I, I have technicians that are used to using strong acids, and and that's probably where we got our highest uh, concentrations compared to using alum or, or sodium bisulfate. But there's not as much. I mean, we, we mix the uh, the dust chamber, you know, the solution from that and the other, and there's not as much phosphorus and potassium as you think. Now, one good acid would be great to use is potassium bisulfate instead of sodium bisulfate, but, but, but they don't make that in the U.S. And so it's uh, the people, the folks that make, that make sodium bisulfate, Jones Hamilton could easily convert a plant to potassium bisulfate, and that, that would be the perfect acid salt for scrubbers. Uh, and, and just one last question. Uh, so did you ever want to control in your two-stage no acid, just a water scrub? And, uh, yeah, in control. fact, we're working on a bacteria, uh, a, a nitrifying bacteria that's acid tolerant that converts ammonia to nitrate. Right. And that makes, that's an a acid forming reaction. And so we're hoping to develop a biological system to, you know, create its own acid. But how about just a plain water scrub? We, we've control. done that too. It gets saturated after and then, you know, what comes in goes out. Thank you. Yeah, well, time for one more question for Hong. Do you, do you have a rough 
Yeah, we haven't done that, but we have all the data, so we, yeah, we can calculate the cost on the on the per bird basis. Well, it's very it's very uh, and it varies during the season. It's a winter, definitely a higher cost, the summer lower cost. And one of the challenges uh, really is managing the pH. So uh, sometimes during the winter flock, when you have very high concentration, so the acid gets saturated just in a few hours, you know, two or three hours. I think I, I do have to cut us off so we can move on to the next presentation, but you'll be around all day? Yes. For more questions? I have a small question. Okay. <coughs> so about how many gallons a week of the acid you have to apply to monitor that um, the efficiency of the energy? How much yeah. acid would you use per scrubber? Uh, the yeah. 25 pounds per 100 gallon. There's 360 liters in the Yeah, that's 100 gallons, oh, almost like 100 gallons. Yeah. So that's a week? Uh, no, that's every time when we when the pH above uh, uh, 6, we add the... So every three days? Oh, it, it it's varies. It varies. Okay. So, so is it like two and a half days? It like a no, it really depends on the, <laughs> the pH. So okay. sometimes, like I mentioned, only take a few hours. So you have to add acid. Sometimes take a few days or a week. The atmospheric ammonia in the house is really how much ventilation do that land that determines how much acid is put per day. Well, the liquid stays the same. You just add more sodium bisulfate, maybe you know, 20 pounds of sodium bisulfate a day. Thanks very much, Hong.